Hi Kristen, nice seeing you connected. Thank you for submitting uh, the homework. Check who, who else has connected to us. No, okay. Uh, then we'll probably not not wait for uh, anyone else and uh, start right away. Whew. Okay, so um, for those of you who are connected uh, through this link or for those of you who are watching it through recordings, this is um, Computational Chemistry uh, 676 summer uh, course and since it is summer course it is uh, a little bit simplified compared to what it is usually in the semester. The goal of the course uh, is the threefold, so uh, one goes over theory background uh, behind any computation chemistry calculations. And uh, it's may maybe most heavier, but it is not our primary goal. Um, then one gets skills, how to build molecular models, uh, which software and, and uh, which hardware one needs to run in order to compute observables and uh, in order to uh, compare them to experiments through scientific communications. So by now we have um, finished chapter one on uh, building molecular models and uh, there are a total of four. We are targeting um, right now on the chapter two, Harvey Fox theory, and uh, first half an hour theoretical background will be on so called uh, concept of uh, Slater determinant. Um, if you have taken in the past or planning to take in the future this uh, the physical chemistry course, you will see more in that. And the practical part, after half an hour of the uh, boring equations, will be a computation of electronic structure of very simple models. And uh, these models will bring us to the uh, next homework we which will be due on uh, coming Monday. So, um, some of you are interested in so-called metal-organic complexes. And metal-organic complex uh, means that there is a, one of the metals, typically transition metals, coordinated with uh, some uh, so-called ligands, uh, fragments from organic chemistry. Uh, since we are on a learning curve, uh, we will start with probably simplest one or one of the simplest one. So uh, we will take as a metal, we will take uh, titanium and as uh, organic ligands, we will take uh, uh, hydroxide groups. And today we will focus only on, on this group in about half an hour when I will be uh, tired mumbling equations. Uh, so we will build this model and compute electronic structure, which means we will find at least total energy and at most um, some energies of orbitals, shapes of orbitals, uh, electronic affinity, uh, ionization energy. And uh, for the homework, uh, I will ask uh, everyone to build so-called oligomers when this uh, titanium hydroxide polymerizes from one titanium to two titanium to uh, three titanium group to four titanium group when they all are 
uh, coordinated either to hydroxyl or uh, oxygen group. So this polymerization makes a bridge between metal organic complexes and uh, solid state metal oxide crystals. So this is the plan for our lab. And when we will be uh, doing the lab after I'm done with uh, equations, here I would like to provide a little, just to go over the, the steps that uh, um, you are able to do yourself, but as a little reminder. So we will open uh, Gauss view on the photon cluster, then start building model, and then we will go into select elements through periodic table. So we will select titanium. Then since uh, in chemistry, an element, an atom can have multiple bonds. And when building models, uh, we need to use our chemical intuition and knowledge to make educated guess how many uh, bonds this titanium will select. For practical uh, reasons, we will select four bonds in tetrahedral coordination. Then for the second element, we will select oxygen uh, with two bonds. And then we will click on the four terminals of this uh, titanium and form this uh, titanium hydroxide, which has some features of metal organic complex. Then from practical side, in the main menu of Gauss view software, we'll go to the calculate Gauss and calculation setup. And there uh, we will go to energy, which means single point, no optimization of geometry, only find electronic structure once. There, after this menu, we will do think that differs from our uh, previous uh, life in this, uh, in this course. Before we were focusing on uh, the before we were focusing on the mechanics uh, for ge for quickest geometry optimization. Today, instead of that, we will select so-called Hartree-Fock method, which will be the subject of our theoretical part for next uh, about seven meetings. But uh, in order to run software, there is no reason to wait until we uh, get hands on on all uh, terminology and equations. So we'll do it right away. So typically, when running electronic structure calculations, we need to specify at least two things. One is computational method, and another one is so-called basis uh, basis set. So uh, if we click on the um, basis set, which is here, the word basis set. And then uh, there will be drop down menu with several options. And um, in about three weeks from now, we will have another session when uh, we will discuss what each of these options means. But today we will select so-called Lionel 2DZ uh, basis set, which is good compromise between precision and um, computational cost for systems with transition metals. Okay. And do not worry if you are not following each step. You will be practically going over the step together with a feedback. So I'm, I'm just giving very quick glance through and overview of, uh, of our uh, plan for today's uh, practical lab session. And then after these important selections are made, uh, when you click uh, Run, Submit, it will ask if you want to save input file uh, in the certain directory and the certain name, and uh, we will design names which uh, reflect nature of the molecule, like one titanium for oxygens for hydrogens. And uh, after saving, one can submit it to the Gaussian. Uh, today, we will still run simple calculations on the local photon cluster, but soon we will use supercomputers uh, like CCAST. And since this molecule is very small, and the method we are going to use is uh, 
quite easy. Uh, like five seconds later, you see a signal that the job uh, has been completed. And after job is com uh, uh, job completed um, signal comes out, you may click onto results summary. And we, we, we are at the end of, of the web. And there, it will be a menu that shows so-called ERHF, which corresponds to total energy. So this total energy is uh, uh, maybe not more spectacular, but one of the most uh, reliable observable. So for each atomic configuration, for each combination of atoms, through some specific methods, one can find total energy. And for example, if you have isomers, same number of atoms, but they are coordinated differently, the, the isomer that has the lowest value of total energy will be most probable to exist in nature. So by finding total energy of a molecule of your dream that you draw or borrow from database, one can identify whether this molecule has a right to exist, whether it will be stable molecule. So if one gets negative, very low negative number, it means it is a good molecule, it's stable. If one would get, uh, like compare two molecules and it will be a little less negative or positive, it, will be, uh, it means it is unstable, ready to explode or ready to burn out in atmosphere. So this um, number found to each molecule is important. Uh, let me check if we have more uh, class members connected. Oh, hi, Jayanta. Nice seeing you connected. Hi, yeah, thanks for a nice presentation uh, okay. last week. Okay, so um, I'm done with overview of our lab, of our practical things. Uh, feel free to ask questions or save questions for the future. So uh, it is practical thing that we will be doing. And uh, you can even start doing it instead of listening to me, if you have a uh, uh, connection to Photon uh, server, uh, if you can open the X-terminal window for Gauss view, you can just try to repeat these things. This is important. This is for our practical practical part of, uh, of the course. So uh, now, uh, close eyes, fall to sleep <laughs> if, uh, if things um, uh, seems boring or um, prepare to see some equations on the uh, on the screen which will be not always spectacular and sometimes boring so um, I do plan to do um, three things in this uh, little theory overview one I will try to summarize what we did in previous like seven, eight meetings in five minutes. So summary of uh, first chapter. Second, I will overview pe periodic table in uh, just very brief way to the extent we needed for this course. And third, I will try to speak about anti-symmetry of multi electron uh, wave functions. So uh, if this terminology, like uh, periodic table, anti-symmetry wave function is your active language, then you do not need this meeting. If it is not, uh, the goal is not to follow each second equation, but get a general idea what are the mutual connections between concepts. Okay, start, set, go. Uh, John Slater is an uh, American uh, chemist and uh, when I was doing a postdoctoral internship at uh, quantum theory project at uh, Gainesville, University of Florida, um, I was in the office close to his former office and uh, there were some aquarels uh, that he drew in his uh, spare time and put on the walls. Um, so he did a major contribution to world science by uh, getting, uh, bringing in mathematical formulation for the anti-symmetry of the wave functions. And the meaning of the subject that we are going to cover today is how 
to compute in the right way which molecule is more stable. So through this anti-symmetry concept, one can uh, be more or less certain about computation which molecule is more stable. So for the overview, um, we are trying to bring math in order to describe molecules. So a molecule is a collection of positive charges. I'm going to bring uh, maybe highlighter. So positive charges is pluses and negative charges so minuses. And for uh, if there are two pluses and two minuses, it's likely H2 molecule. Each particle that composes molecule should be specified by an arrow, by three-dimensional vector. And then one writes down equations for this uh, positions of ions or so-called wave functions, which is a distribution of probability in space that a certain electron, a certain ion, resides in a certain place of a space. Uh, since this is too complicated, one tries to sp chop this problem onto electronic part and nuclear part. And electronic part um, is our subject for next seven meetings. And for nuclear part, to some extent, we are done. So if it is what we were doing before, if the molecule is in equilibrium, if it doesn't burn, if it doesn't explode, if it doesn't uh, excite it with a laser, then instead of probability distribution as a function of position of ions, one can just speak about position of ions and apply uh, so-called Newton's equations that are sometimes included into program of, uh, of high school for looking how each atom is inside a molecule move uh, along the time if uh, it gets a little thermal excitation. So depending on positions of ions, one can draw total energy, total potential energy, which uh, will have minimum if it is stable, maximum if it is unstable, and very deep minimum if it is globally stable. And um, this um, picture of potential energy surfaces is a language of theoretical chemistry, like transition state theory for overcoming over a barrier. Main achievement of our seven lectures long consideration was this flow chart, where uh, this circle, oval, circle, cylindrical uh, things at the beginning and the end correspond to input and output. So at the input, one starts from geometry that a human may draw with Gauss here. The output is the geometry that computer predicts to be better. And all boxes inside show an algorithm how bad geometry, or maybe not ideal geometry, converges into ideal geometry. This comes through practicing so-called gradient, so change of energy with uh, respect to manipulating of positions of atomic positions, or positions of atoms. So if this gradient goes downhill, we, we keep these changes until atoms find their best spot. Okay. And um, just returning back from ions to electrons. Um, there is a part of um, nature of science, so-called uh, quantum theory, that tells what would be the properties of uh, objective of like uh, parts of, of nature if we assume that there is a probability that a certain object like an electron can be here and there at the same time. So it's waves of probability. And if one accepts this uh, philosophical concept and tries to uh, solve it mathematically, then in order to uh, process it, one needs to formulate so-called total energy operator, or sometimes people tell Hamiltonian. So uh, in order to be, to be mathematically rigorous accountant of all interactions in the molecule, one can chop contributions to this total energy on several groups. So they're circled here. So kinetic energy of ions, energy because of ions are moving, kinetic energy of electrons, 
than potential energy uh, repulsion of positively charged ions then repulsion of uh, negatively charged electrons and a very interesting attraction of uh, positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons so total five types of terms and each type may include many many terms if we leave behind ionic motion if we uh, want to look only on electrons we are going to shrink the Hamiltonian and instead of five terms we are going to use three terms so those are with these notations and abbreviations T sub E kinetic energy of electrons then V sub E E potential energy of repulsion between electrons and V sub E N potential energy of attraction between electrons and nucleus so if this operator is known and we apply it to unknown wave function we are getting wave function itself and energy of the system which is a function of positions of all ions so this equation is our goal for next uh, seven uh, for next seven meetings if this equation would be possible to solve by pen and paper then I wouldn't have a salary, I wouldn't uh, have this job, and you wouldn't have this course. Because uh, all things that we are going to do uh, in, in our next meetings is attempts to justify that this equation can be solved by a computer. Because it, it cannot be solved uh, by pen and paper uh, in a mathematical sense. Why it cannot be solved? in a uh, mathematical sense uh, suppose we already accept the wish to solve this equation on computer solving an equation uh, on a computer means finding this phi function not as like sine cosine exponential or something complicated but uh, find it as we do Excel tables. Uh, select, so this phi depends on uh, positions of electrons. We select several positions of electrons. First position, second position, third, so-called grid points. And at each point of space, we find value of the function. Okay? So if anyone is uh, not happy or objecting the concepts, please uh, feel free to uh, stop me and uh, suggest to prove or, or justify justify things I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very I would be very happy to do so we are browsing in space of ideas it's it's not yet actual theory suppose we chop the space like x coordinate on several grid points and just for simple example, let's consist that our the whole space in one dimension has only 10 grid points. Then, since our space is three-dimensional, uh, then it will be 10 points for x, 10 points for y, and 10 points for, to, for z. Then, in order to cover the whole space, we need at least 1,000 points, 10 by 10 by 10. So, it will be a um, discrete basis to represent wave function for one electron. And we know that one electron is in hydrogen atom. So here is object hydrogen atom, number of electrons one. There are three uh, Cartesian projections for position of electrons, so we need 10 to the power 3, 1000 grid points. How would it change if we have H2 molecule? So it has two electrons, and each electron needs independent grid points for its wave function. So instead of 10 to, to the power 3, it will be 1,000 for first electron, another 1,000 for second electron. But since they are independent, we are not adding together these numbers, but we are multiplying them. So in order to uh, describe 
uh, wave function in a very rough numerical way, uh, wave function of H2, molecular hydrogen, we need 10 to the power of 6 million points. We can do it. We can create one megabyte uh, Excel file with uh, million grid points. It's fine. What if we need to describe one carbon atom? So carbon has uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, total of six electrons. And if we use three, if we use uh, 10 grid points, three degrees of freedom, per, uh, because three dimensional space, and then six electrons, we need six to the power, well, sorry, 10 to the power 6 times 3. So 10 to the power 18 grid points to represent wave function of just single carbon atom in a vacuum. It starts to scare me. Even if you have good mathematical procedure to solve, uh, it will be too many numbers. But still, um, like 10 to the power 18 is a terabyte, 10 to the power 12 terabyte to the power 18, like a million of terabytes. Maybe it's still possible for today's civilization. But if you want to do it for acetylene uh, molecules, C2H2, total number of electrons, six electrons uh, for each carbon, six times two, plus two electrons for each uh, hydrogen, total 14 electrons. So 10 to the power. 14 times 3, 10 to the 42. By today, we do not have computers that can save this amount of, of data. So, literal uh, analytical or numerical solution of the wave function that depends on position of first electron, second electron, third electron, so many electrons, is impossible. On one hand, it seems pity that uh, we are so uh, helpless our civilization can do. But on the other hand, we can try to find some approximations, some ways to neglect property, some uh, precision, and still get majority of chemical properties by uh, doing some tricks. And in some sense, computational chemistry is a science of tricks to avoid too many large number of degrees of freedom. Whew. So, uh, do any of you have, uh, those who are, who are listening, I, I remember I invited everyone not to listen and do your things, but does anyone has questions to, uh, to this uh, aspect? Uh, feel free to send emails or type in the chat line or just stop me if uh, uh, if something seems uh, not realistic or, or doubtful um, okay so there is there is a mathematical concept and <clears throat> some of us are not covered um, enough mathematical background to solve this equation, but we do not need it for this course. Generally, there are mathematical theorems that a uh, wave function, a function that depends on one function that depends on many variables, like here phi sub a depends on variables one, two, three, four, can be replaced by product of, of many functions that depend on one variable. But this is possible only if independent vari if the variables are independent, which means it would be possible in our chemical situations if electrons do not interact with each other. But they do interact. So we need to assume that interaction between electrons is negligible or uh, maybe if it is not negligible, we need to approximate still neglect it and then follow the consequences or maybe to correct it. Another thing, um, 
if we want to find the single electron function or replace one function of many to many functions of one. Um, we need to address the following, the following challenge, the following aspect. Through your chemical intuition, you may already assume that single electron can, for example, form a covalent bond and reside in a space between two atoms. Or maybe a single electron can, can be shared on the several atoms, like uh, spawning over the whole molecule. So it would be really great to find a language to, go, to be more certain instead of speaking of one electron is delocalized to a molecule or sitting on one atom, is to mm, select so-called basis, setting, uh, telling that uh, electrons are um, using certain states on the atom that they would tell if all atoms are not interacting. So if we, if we need to neglect interaction between atoms, we can take some language and some experience from description of individual atoms, such as hydrogen atom. But generally, we are trying to address very ambitious, complicated uh, problem and we know that electrons repel each other, they electrons, they influence each other. But we are trying a way to neglect their interaction. So it is combined uncombinable. Therefore, it is an interesting science with more and more new developments. Okay. So, um, next logical paragraph. If we will be partially successful in neglecting interaction of electrons or interaction between atoms. What can we borrow from description of individual atoms? And with these words, I'm going to go to so-called uh, periodic table. So if we do uh, have only if you have electronic Hamiltonian, we have terms uh, of one of the major terms is attraction of electrons to nuclei. Oh, I look at Who is helping to uh, uh, to perform this uh, presentation? So this interaction between uh, electrons, lowercase, and nucleus, uppercase, uh, depends on charge of, of nucleus, and this is attraction of electron to nucleus. If we neglect interaction between other electrons, then these first two terms um, will convert Hamiltonian for a molecule into Hamiltonian for an atom, such as hydrogen atom. And uh, several years ago, I was uh, going on a conference at the time when I when I due to present lecture, and uh, my assistant Dr. Mikhailov uh, was preparing the slide, so I put his uh, photograph and give him credit. So, if we have one hydrogen atom, then uh, attraction of electron to a nuclei, so its uh, potential energy, depends as like V and E between nuclear and, and electron, as position of electron is very negative when we are close to the center of nucleus and gets less and less negative when we are away. And by laws of quantum theory on one hand, and by our experience from uh, maybe just basic chemistry, um, electrons in hydrogen atom 
take certain levels with certain energies and certain shapes of uh, of their orbitals. Mathematically, they are here. Number one, number two, number three. And mathematically, there are complicated equations that uh, express this solution. So there is radial part and uh, dependence on distance from center and uh, second part depending on uh, angular part. And uh, if one wants to go into details, there are mathematical equations. But if one is um, mm, rushing to immediate analysis, here are the figures that are typically introduced to anyone who starts learning chemistry. So the lowest possible state of an electron in the hydrogen atom is so-called S orbital. When electron is symmetrically uh, centered around nucleus. The next, if one gives it a little bit more energy, it takes so-called P orbital, which uh, has minimum in the center and then two uh, spheres at sides, and there are a total of three of p orbitals. The next states, it looks like a flower with four petals, and uh, so-called d orbitals, and then there are more complicated uh, f orbitals. So the higher the order, the more uh, is uh, degeneracy. And those shapes of uh, probability distribution for electron to reside in certain space around nucleus are called atomic orbitals and if we, we are trying to inherit knowledge about individual non-interacting atoms into interacting molecules we may take these mathematical expressions for, for these figures um, as building blocks to describe molecules so once again, atomic orbitals are building blocks to describe electronic states of, of the molecules. And when we are practicing a selection of basis set in the uh, Gauss view, we are selecting which mathematical representation of these images is used to represent our molecule in the next calculation. A uh, few more details. If one depends on de uh, how these functions depend on uh, distance from center, for s orbital it drops down. If it is 2s orbital it drops down, goes up and drops down. For p orbital it's always zero at center, then go up and drop down. And if one wants to see these orbitals, there is a really great website uh, which is called p-table p-table.com uh, I do hear some voices, let me check uh, who is, maybe we have more uh, attendees no, okay so if you look on to the uh, p-table.com um, you will not regret. It's a really good educational tool and I'm just rushing through to our practical things um, but just su suggesting. Okay. Um, let me see how many slides uh, I do have. We, we are already uh, partially tired. So, um, I have last part of this uh, theory background. So if we use, uh, one thing is to use uh, the positive information from uh, description of atoms to describe molecules, and those are atomic wave functions. There is um, another aspect that uh, we will start today and maybe go into details next time, the so-called anti-symmetry. Anti Most of the molecules have more than one electrons and these electrons repel each other so if we design wave function of a molecule that includes several electrons one needs to select such functional form 
of a molecule that will include, that will be most optimized to describe repelling electrons. And uh, the requirement to match this repulsion of electrons is as follows. If one swaps, it, so suppose we have a function that depends on the two uh, electrons. If you swap order of first and second electron, one, two, to one, wave function must change its sign. The probability distribution is wave function square is not affected by this, but it will um, it will be most ideal to describe real molecules. Why? So I'm going to give one quick example. So this is related to so-called Pauli exclusion principle, which tells no electron, uh, the, uh, two electrons cannot reside in the same atomic orbital or in the same orbital. So if uh, we select functional form that would match this anti-symmetry, uh, atomic orbital 1 for electron 1, atomic orbital 2 for electron 2, minus atomic orbital 2 for electron 1, atomic orbital 1 for electron 2, it will be good. But now, if we put, make a little experiment, and I know you are tired, uh, I'm, I'm targeting to finish this boring theory very soon. So, if we try to screw it up and put wave function 1, so same atomic orbital for uh, each electron, first and second, then phi 1 of R1, phi 1 R2, minus phi 1 R1, phi 1 R2. These terms will become equivalent, they will subtract, and wave function will be 0. 0 means it doesn't exist in nature. So this specific form of wave function prevents us from create from violating Pauli exclusion principle. And here is uh, how you formulate it. So one needs uh, in, uh, to anti-symmetrize product of one electronic wave functions, which uh, is ideally solved in the form of uh, determinant. If one writes one electronic functions in a matrix, so number of function uh, stays the same in a row, in next row it will be different function, and uh, the number of particle of electron uh, is different when we go from one column to another, so it is one, one, two, two, then determinant of such matrix will reproduce this uh, phi 1 r1 phi 2 r2 minus phi 2 r1 phi 1 r2. I think we need to uh, finish uh, the um, theory part here. I will just uh, summarize. So um, the big challenge for computational chemistry is to avoid one way function of many arguments. We need to replace one wave function of many arguments with many wave function of one argument. Then, if we arrive to this idea, we are borrowing something from uh, atomic physics, from describing of individual atoms, which is basically said. And then we are arriving to the problem of electrons interacting to each other. In order to match power exclusion principle, to forbid two electrons sit on the same atomic orbital, we are designing a way how we compose molecular wave function out of atomic wave functions. This is anti-symmetric wave function and it is referred to as Slater determinant. Whew, I'm done. So, um, I'll probably go over uh, re uh, like re reciting this uh, thing again on the next meeting, but we are over time for, for theory today, and I suggest we go to a uh, practical aspect. So, um, please verbalize or type or email questions if you have some, 
and if you don't I invite I invite um, save send to background I invite you to um, open your mobile Xterm if you are on Windows PC or terminal if you are on Mac and <clears throat> we need at least two uh, windows one well maybe today one the window that is connected to increase the font Is the font sufficiently uh, big? Oh yes, Alicia, please do it as well. Um, so um, let me know if the font is too small. I can uh, keep uh, enlarging it. So um, log into the Photon server by the uh, if you have forgotten it, I can uh, uh, share the command in the, in the chat line. I, I hope everyone is happy with this uh, command and because we already did it and even uh, presented how to do it. So here is a command to connect. After uh, you are connecting there and typing the password, um, please navigate to the um, directory corresponding where we do our exercises. So scratch 001 chem 476 slash chem 676 underscore summer and there There, uh, go to the subdirectory corresponding to, uh, to to you, to your subdirectory, which for in most cases is composed of your uh, first names. Uh, in um, in my sub subdirectory, I just try to be to organize and uh, open new subdirectory for each uh, meeting. But it's only personal taste. You uh, may or may not do the same. And then, after you are located in your subdirectory, uh, please connect to the. Please uh, open uh, Gauss view, and uh, let me suggest to put the symbol. I'm percent, which is uh, shift seven after after the command. So if you do this, um, you will be able to type commands after you execute the software. So otherwise, if you do not put this I'm percent symbol, uh, your command line will be blocked until you close the graphical software. And then um, after you did it, you'll see several uh, windows popping up, maybe not instantaneously, but with time. And in order to prevent command line from uh, automatic log off, I suggest to type TOP. And then it will show uh, just the, the processes. Let me type it in the, in the command line. TOP. OK. So, now let's go over things that we did review in um, uh, at the beginning of our, our meeting. So I am really open to hear the feedback, but. Uh, I will start redoing things, although I have them already, already done uh, for, for a second time, just as a, as a demonstration. So um, those are the windows that um, 
are expected to pop up at your um, screens. If building of molecular model does not work as efficient uh, in your setup, you may build the model in the Avogadro or JMO on your local computer and then transfer the file to the Photon server. So, um, um, I will do demonstration uh, in Gauss view first and then if needed I can repeat it uh, with um, Avogadro. So, opening new create molecular group. After this there should one should see new uh, white window. So then in the gray in the main uh, uh, I'll close these things so they do, do not. So in the gray window which is uh, main part of the uh, Gaussian operation there is a builder fragment and there I click on this builder fragment and there appears periodic table so I'm going to the fourth row four. So after potassium, calcium, scandium, then titanium. Click in titanium. So after clicking on the titanium, it offers uh, several coordination numbers and different angles. So starting from no coordination atom to octahedral and for um, three uh, and four coordination it also has options with different angles so we are going to tetrahedral it's about in the middle and then um, I'm navigating to the center of the white box and click there once If I want to make image a little bigger, I uh, one can scroll the wheel on a mouse if it is a Windows PC, or uh, touch the uh, touchpad with two fingers on Mac, and uh, enlarge or shrink size of the model, how it uh, appears visually. Then I'm going back to periodic table and selecting oxygen then it has three options for coordination and uh, I make sure that the blue highlight touch is a uh, for central part of the fragment and then I'm uh, subsequently clicking on uh, this um, terminal terminals of this tetrahedral titanium click once Click twice, well, not, not twice, but second time. Three and four. One may do a quick optimization, for example, by clicking the screen, but it is not uh, necessary right now. We are just looking for a concept. So, uh, it's a broomstick for optimization if, if one wants to practice it. So, next uh, step is uh, I'm going to calculate Gaussian calculation setup. And here is uh, the panel for uh, setting up calculation. So, there are several tabs. The first one is job type, I select energy. For the method, uh, ground state 
property fork. So there are several options, but I select property fork. And then there is a beta set. The beta set, one drop down for about halfway and select uh, one or TDZ. Uh, later on, we may try different beta sets. And the meaning of this beta set is um, an attempt to inherit useful positive knowledge from atomic physics. If one for a time neglects or uh, neglects interaction between atoms, then building blocks for finding eigenstates, for finding uh, electronic structure of molecule is composed of solutions for atoms. And uh, all of these uh, basis sets here uh, include different way of mathematically represent S, P, D orbitals uh, of, of, of hydrogen atom. Okay, and after uh, sele making this selection, I'm going to the bottom line and click Submit. So after selecting uh, the Submit, there is a menu that tells you must save Gaussian input file before you submit. Would you like to save input file now? I click Save. And since I was already practicing it, I may select a uh, unique name. So I'm uh, encoding molecular composition, atomic composition, titanium, oxygen, hydrogen. Then I can write that it is hardy frog. And one o two d z for the base set, and then click save. And then there is one more menu that shows uh, whether you want to submit the following to Gaussian, and you click OK. So one waits a little and then it uh, there is a menu that tells Gaussian job completed and there are two output files dot chk and dot log I'm selecting dot log clicking OK it uh, redraws the molecule after uh, calculation is done and now um, I'm going to this uh, go through main menu and click on results. In results, there is a summary. And uh, in this uh, summary, there is um, details of the job. And most in in important thing is this uh, energy. And it shows minus 359. So it is something that I want to save. Okay, let me, uh, I'm going to, um, if, if you can arrive to this point, you are done for today. I'm going to uh, talk one by one and check uh, uh, how things are, are going for you. So I, I will just uh, ask as, um, as everyone is listed in today's connection. Uh, Joyanta, please answer or type uh, uh, are you trying this thing and how far are you or, or do you have any uh, challenges? Okay, no answer from Joyanta. Kristen? I didn't, I didn't connect it. Okay, uh, I, I'll, I'll make a first round of asking, and then uh, uh, we'll help help everyone. Uh, Kristen, um, if you want, I may uh, make a demonstration of building it with uh, Avogadro and uh, transferring. Mm. How how things are going at at at. I was able to build in Avogadro. Were you able to uh, upload the molecule to um, to your directory? 
can you help with the transfer? Okay, I will. I will. Uh, I, I'm just checking uh, where everyone is. Uh, Alicia, you may answer through microphone or just type. Uh, were you able to build and run or uh, experience any challenges? I am so confused. I get I kind of get it, but I get lost in additions to the molecule. Okay, but you have uh, you do have ghost view open, and you you are trying to build the molecule, right? Okay, okay. I think your you, your case is uh, uh, simple enough. Let me complete the first round of questions, and uh, then. Uh, go to practical help. Uh, Janice? I think you are the only one with unmuted microphone. How things are uh, going at your side? No, I cannot hear you. I, I, I hear breathing, but not uh, not the the voice with information. Probably you you may type if 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 the voice is not uh, transmitting well. Okay, well. I've got everything done. The molecule is set up and optimized. Uh, please uh, record total energy. And if everything works uh, fine, you may uh, go forward and uh, build uh, oligomers and uh, find their their energies. And um, note that for optimal geometry, for optimal isomers, the Oxygen should alternate uh, by 90 degrees. Okay, um, so I'm returning to Gianta. So let me. I did not connect it. <clears throat> so, Gianta, would you please save the configuration that you have created by now? Alicia, if you, if you need to head out, um, please save the geometry that you have created in your directory. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, talk to Alicia first and then go back to Gianta. So, control C, C, D, C, D, C, D, Alicia. So, okay, and uh, please try to save as uh, when you do it. I, if you are, if you are under this account, I should be able to to see it in the, in your directory. Okay, so if you need to leave, I think. Uh, um, there will be no new information, and I plan to share the recordings with all attendees. Um, so, um, let's focus on... Uh, It looks like the energy calculated. Uh, Janice, is it for for which uh, for which system? For for this uh, uh, hydroxide, or you started uh, oligomers? If your energy is lower than the one I was showing in demonstration, 
it means you found much better geometry. So uh, it is what we were talking at the, at the beginning. The configuration that has the lowest energy is the most reliable. So you are on, on a good track. So keep going this way. Uh, Joanta, please save please save the uh, molecule that you have created. And I hope you are in your uh, directory and I want to see the file that uh, right now your directory sh uh, has uh, zero files. Can you please uh, uh, in Gauss view save save the uh, structure even if it is not complete just uh, practice click on save save command okay i will wait for uh, for the file and your answer in the chat line and uh, let's uh, go to the case of, of Kristen. Kristen, would you, uh, you're welcome to share the screen and you are uh, very encouraged to uh, upload whatever you have created into the uh, photon in your subdirectory. But maybe sharing the screen is the, the, the quickest and best. Right now, uh, your screen is, is shared. Okay, I can hear you. I can, I, I can hear you, yes. So, let's start from, can you show uh, Avogadro is the molecule that you did build. Okay. And uh, if you uh, practice save as, uh, can I see how you, how you are saving it? I'll save PDB. Avogadro bin. Why do are you saving it to Avogadro bin? Uh, select uh, different place, desktop, or maybe you you can select uh, design specific place for the course. Like uh, I see you have directory chem six seven six. And uh, one drive. Uh, it's but well you do whatever is uh, you prefer but i i would find uh, save it on local computer not on uh, one drive my only issue is that i can't avogadro for some reason won't work on my mac but i'm able to connect to um my desktop computer through the lab okay 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 Okay, um, um, please save it in such place that later you can find in command line on the local computer.
Um, can we go to this directory, to the directory where you saved, where you did save uh, this thing in the terminal? So let's do ls minus lt to see all files. Uh, space between minus ls space minus lt. Yes. <laughs> Can you type? P no, 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 no. Right now, right now in this uh, in this window. You yes, we need uh, lock on local computer. Okay. Uh, before we go forward, can you do more space and then name of this uh, file, just to make sure that it it is reasonable. Enter. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and now let's do SCP space name of the file. Space user username. No, 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 do not type user. I'm just since we are on the record, I'm trying to be humble and not uh, speak out the, the name of the user. <laughs> K I L I N at no, 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 we, we are using. Uh, under uh, KILIN uh, account, yes. And issue. Now column. And uh, it's better. Oh yes. Um, correct. I would just use copy paste because I am I'm not patient enough for. And then uh, name of your. Sub sub directory. Uh, slash. And now type the password. And now let's go into uh, the direct. Okay, I I do see it on. I I'm, I'm monitoring. So type ls minus lt in this directory. Ls, it's here, right? And if you type more, you you should see the same thing as it was uh, on on the local computer. More space and then name of this file. Yes, underscore dating. Uh, now, uh, please, I do you have running uh, Ghost View right now, or you need to, to open it? Let's, let's check. Even if, uh, if it will close uh, after Molecule is uh, created, it's not a big uh, challenge. Quartz, okay. Uh huh. It, it looks like it's opening. Okay, so let's uh, go into a uh, file open.
And uh, do not worry, it's uh, there is a little delay, uh, which is a practice for our patients. Yeah, slowly move to the open. And when you see that uh, it changes this, uh, it looks like it is pressed, then slowly release finger. Uh, with online connection, it, it happens all the time. Uh -huh. And now select file type PDB. Okay, and now you can select this one, open. And it doesn't show things because of this graphical tunneling uh, issues, but do not worry, uh, do not panic. Mm -hmm. It shows at the bottom, nine atoms, 58 electrons, neutral signet, which means it, it uh, did read it successfully. Now, in the main menu, let's go to calculate. And again, let's practice patience and uh, if it doesn't respond, yes, Gaussian calculation setup. So job type energy is fine. Now let's go to the method. So hard to is good. Uh, basis set. So let's click on the basis set. Again, slowly and with patience and uh, go to until you see one or two dz. So it's about six lines over. Okay, and now on the left bottom, click submit. Safe. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good name. Safe. Submit to Gaussian. Okay. Now select the yeah, log file. Okay. and uh, go to uh, results in the main menu results summary so minus 359 so you you, you got what, what what is what is needed um so i think you you have a success you can i don't know copy paste this number uh, and later on, uh, like on, on Wednesday, you'll declare what will be the homework, but this will be part part of the homework. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I'm very happy it did work. Uh, Joanta, uh, how things did you, are you keep, do you keep trying? D, minus minus T. Let's see what is in your. You still have uh, nothing in the, in your directory, please. Um, you can try it later, but uh, as we go, it's, it's it's a good opportunity, and it doesn't seem uh, too challenging. Just r recommending you to to do it. Okay. Ah, this help of classmates, Levi. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. My pleasure. Uh, let me check uh, what is okay. I see Genesis. Uh, uh, does have the uh, dimer and it looks like error termination so uh, something d didn't work for for the dimer uh, 
it will be interesting to figure it out. So, um, please, uh, who is on board now? Janice, Kristen, and Gianta. Uh, please let me know uh, if you want more information or if you if there are some uh, uh, questions that I can uh, answer answer right now. No questions right now. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Joranta, do you have any questions to me right now? Uh, I think I just might have to use a different basis set. Um, Lionel, uh, Janice, Lionel 2DZ is, uh, is a good thing for transition uh, transition metals. And by the way, if you try different basis sets, result will depend on, on them. So to be consistent, one needs to make a series of calculations with the same basis set. I will take help from Janice and Kristen. Yeah, if uh, if they agree, would be gr would be great, and I, I appreciate it. Maybe we'll uh, make some schedule of assigning extra credit to helpers who who help each other. Uh, send them email and and uh, ask for the help, and let me know if uh, I, I'll try to convert appreciation in in form of of the extra credit. Um. If there are no more uh, questions regarding today's meeting, we are successfully done with the program for today. And I suggest uh, that we announce this meeting uh, completed and uh, go forward with uh, disconnection. Oh, okay. And I'll stay, I'll stay online uh, more if there will be more, more questions, but... Uh, uh, presence is not mandated everyone is welcome to depart to di to disconnect i'll just say stay if if there will be more more questions so genius writes here yeah, anxiety that sounds good over not anxiety alrighty that sounds good i'll make sure that gets fixed also of course joanne i'll be happy to help i have a few errands to have to run tonight but i should be available all day tomorrow joanne great thank you Mm. Okay, so uh, I am uh, announcing uh, meeting done, completed, and uh, I'm stopping the uh, recordings.